Hey, welcome to the video. If you're trying to save money, I have four things that you should either not buy entirely or just limit significantly how much you spend on it. So let's get right into it. The first one is going to be takeout food. For me, this is my biggest weakness because sometimes I'm just lazy or I just want really tasty food and I just don't want to put in the time required to make it myself. So. This generally ends up being like a 20 or $30 impulse purchase. And I usually find that I would end up doing this mostly like at least once a week, sometimes twice. But even just that, it's like $30 each time. So that's like $120 to $250 a month just in takeout. You can buy groceries for $60 per week. So it's very, very significant. It's extremely significant. So that's pretty much the biggest thing that I personally think would be a good idea to limit. Like, I want to try to get eating out to like once a month or so. To me, that's ideal. The second one would be buying your coffee from a cafe. So I think there are some situations where this is fine, but doing it every single day, it's quite expensive. It's like 60 bucks a month. It's not insane in comparison to other things, but it, it is definitely more expensive than just making it yourself. Generally, these cafes use a drip machine too anyway. So if you really like coffee, if you just get like a water kettle, whatever you call it, just a water boiling pot, and you just do pour over or a French press, like it doesn't take that long, maybe five minutes. Like you can let your water boil while you do something else. You pour your coffee, or you pour the water over the coffee and then after a few minutes you just have coffee or in a french press you let it sit for five or six minutes you push it down you pour it it's actually quite simple and the coffee will generally taste way better and it kind of helps you have a nicer routine for coffee in my opinion and it's significantly cheaper like if you go to a cafe every day it's about 60 bucks a month as we said for $60, you can literally buy everything you need, including the coffee, to get yourself going. And by the second month, you're already saving money on coffee. You could also not drink coffee, <laughs> but that's tough. I love coffee, but I have been trying to stop drinking it because it makes me somewhat anxious. But I really love the flavor, and because it's not like that bad, for me personally, I usually still drink it a little, but not as much as I used to. Hi, this is me from post-editing, so I didn't realize it, but I didn't mention like, one of the things I wanted to say. Starbucks will actually give you like free refills if you're a member at some locations, so if you drink more than one coffee per day, that's something you might want to consider. You also get a free coffee or drink on your birthday, so it's definitely worth signing up for the app. Even if you only go very infrequently, you may as well just earn the points because you'll eventually get something for free. So. Just a good tip for you right there. I definitely think like going to a cafe for like a social thing is better than going every day for just a normal coffee, just generally any cafe, because you're just spending a lot of money for what it is that you're actually getting. So another one, this isn't quite like a product, but if you go to multiple grocery stores, just download a flyer for every store. This way you can just quickly look at them, take a few minutes, and then you can say, okay, I'm gonna buy fruit from this store. I'm gonna buy vegetables from this store. Just a really quick one. You can save a lot of money like that because why spend $8 on a watermelon here when you can get it for $5 here? And finally, subscription services. I would recommend you only stay subscribed for the duration of time that you're actually using it. Like don't be subscribed to multiple services all the time. There's just no reason to do it. Outside of YouTube, I only spend like 60 bucks a year on subscriptions, give or take. Give or take like a month. Like usually I know what I want to see, like maybe one or two shows during this month or two at most of subscription. I'll watch everything and then I unsubscribe. I usually, as soon as I sign up, I unsubscribe right away. And then if I'm like halfway through a show, by the time the subscription's over, I'll buy another month, I'll finish it. And then maybe I'll watch another show with the extra time, but then I'm just done. And then after that subscription is over, I will then subscribe to another service and watch what show I want from there. 
if you just stay if you just stay subscribed all the time it's just expensive and you're not even really using the service so it's good to just buy a month watch what you want and then go to a different service in my opinion now that's all I have for this video it's just a quick one this week I have a lot of assignments at school so thank you for watching and see you next time bye bye